All right, this section is gonna teach you how to add a custom URL to your website so that rather than sending people to nickwalter.pythonanywhere.com, you could actually send them to something like, in my case, I have the URL nickwalter.info, like it's a little bit cleaner. Like if you're gonna use this portfolio to really share your thoughts on your blog and have it be sort of a, a talking point when you're, you're trying to get a job, like, oh, check out my website, you can see my portfolio and resume there. Like maybe you want something a little bit more professional. Now, in order to move forward with this, uh, there's two paid things that have to happen. The first is you have to buy a domain from some sort of a domain name provider like uh, Google Domains. That's the one that I really love and recommend. Uh, but there's things like GoDaddy and Namecheap. And then also you have to get a paid account with Python Anywhere in order for them uh, to let you do that, you have that's part of their paid package. So if you're willing to move forward on those two things, uh, I'd love to show you how to do that. So the first one, Google Domains, uh, like I said, is my recommended one. Uh, also, there's GoDaddy and Namecheap. The thing that I just like about Google Domains is there's no like upselling or other crap. It's just really clean, and it's it's a big, essentially twelve bucks a month to get a domain. So if you go ahead and just go to Google uh, Domains. Let's see, oh, domains.google is their official thing. I forget that they have their own top level thing. Um, but anyways, you can go ahead and sign in here, check out your stuff and, and you know, you can search for something like, oh, let's say that your name is uh, Brad. Uh, I'm trying to think of a last name. Let's try Brad Walter, okay. Um, let's see if that .com is available. Maybe it's not, but you just gotta go through, find whatever uh, domain name uh, that you want. Look, bradwalter.com is not there, but maybe you're saying, oh, I want to be bradwalter.info, uh, dr. Dr. Bradley Walter. <laughs> These are some great suggestions. Anyways, you got to go get a domain, okay? So that's step one. Step two is that with Python Anywhere, you have to have a paid account. So go ahead and move over to account and do all the work here to get the hacker uh, level. That's just the least one that you need in order to move forward. And this is so crazy, like... Uh, the, you can run a website that gets 100,000 hits a day on this website. And that's typical. Like it could probably do more than that. Um, but anyways, and it's like for five bucks a month, that's amazing. Uh, for, right now, even for free, it's not doing all that bad. So anyways, uh, go ahead, do the switch now and, and get that all set up. So if you successfully have done that, if you go over to web, over by the name, so first you should see some cool graphs. There's all sorts of cool things that come with a paid account, but you should see that there's this little edit icon for your website. So if we click on this, we can rename your web app. And so uh, this is where you would enter in your do domain name. So for me personally, I have the domain nickwalter.info. So I would move over here and I would change the name of my web app to www.nickwalter.info info okay so whatever your domain is make sure you enter it in there this is mine uh, so go ahead and do rename web app okay and then once you've done that you'll get a new pop-up down here that says dns setup uh, so now it has this url in which you have to get your domain to essentially point to this url right here so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this Okay, and you'll notice, I believe now this no longer works. Yeah, see, so this, once you start doing this, you gotta go back. If you ever want to undo this, you can just click this and like, uh, I think you can go back to nickwalter.python. I'd have to double check on that. But we're moving forward. Uh, assuming that you have this, you would move over to wherever you've got your domain name. So in my case, I'm using Google Domains. I'm gonna click on DNS, and then I'm gonna scroll to the bottom here. And I'm going to add a C name record. So regardless of where you have your domain, you got to get to where you can add records and look for the C name. And you're going to add one for www. And then for the domain name, paste in that whatever your thing was. Yours is going to be different from mine. But go ahead and hit add there. Okay. And what this will do, and you'll notice this note, sometimes it can take up to two days for changes to work. So in the world of online domains, it's not always speedy. Uh, that, you know, you add a, get a new no, domain name, add a C name, and that everything works. It doesn't always work out that quickly. Uh, like if we come and try and go to, for example, nickwalter.info, uh, 
it doesn't go anywhere. Now, that doesn't mean that we set up anything wrong. In fact, I think we did set up everything correct. I mean, I forgot the www here, www.nickwalter.info. And yeah, we're getting nothing here, uh, but it just takes some time. So maybe come back in an hour, two hours, a whole nother day. Uh, if you've correctly entered in that C name and the www, so www is the name and then the data is that URL that you had. If you've done that correctly, it should be working, although, you know, it's going to take some time. So I'm going to come back, though, and show you one more tip uh, because Python Anywhere forces you to have a www in front of your domain name. And you may be thinking, hey, I don't, you know, I don't want a www in front of it. How can I handle that? Like someone should be able to go to nickwalter.info. And I'm going to show you how we can fix that in a little bit here, but I want to wait for this to start working. So while we're waiting for these changes to happen, there's a couple of things that I want to walk through here. So one is if we scroll down uh, our website, remember we had forcing HTTPS. Now that we are using our own domain name, we have to get a new HTTPS certificate. So if you go ahead and click on this, uh, you can just do this auto renewed Let's Encrypt certificate, which this is a really awesome project that essentially uh, lets you get a certificate. You can also go out and buy one somewhere, but I would just do this auto renew thing. So go ahead and hit save on that. Okay, and I would also make sure that this might have already been on for you, but I had switched it off to turn it back on now that I have this. And once you have this in place, let's go ahead and do the reload here. The next thing is now that we have a new domain name for our project, we have to add that to our allowed host. So this means we have to go through sort of our whole flow of making a change locally and then pushing it up, right? All those different things. So let's go back to our project here locally on our own computer. And up here in the allowed host, rather than nickwalter.python.anywhere, I'm going to do www.nick, I can't spell my own name, nickwalter.info. Okay, and make sure that you have the www, that's really important. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Then I'm going to come to my terminal. And this is where we're just going to go through that checklist that we went through before to make sure that we have Anytime we make a change to our code, I really recommend just following this. So I'm gonna do my pip freeze first, okay? Then I'm going to do a git add period, then a git commit dash m, and say new domain, exclamation point, okay? Uh, oh, and I forgot, I'll do a control C here. If we do an exclamation point, I've got to do a space afterwards, okay? Uh, now that I have that in place, I'm going to do a git push origin. Okay, so that pushes it up to GitHub. That all looks good. Okay, next we're going to come over to this console here. Uh, now that we're here, again, make sure that you move on to the virtual environment into the project directory. We're already there though. Let's go ahead and do a git pull origin get our new code that we had and look that brings it down here so i'm going to do uh, the pip install requirements.txt everything's already in place so we don't need that then i'm going to do a migrate there is no changes i'm going to do a collect static uh, say yes to this again nothing needs to be changed there and so then with this in place i'm going to go ahead and reload the web app okay so now we've got those pieces in place one last thing that I want to show you is that, for example, I had talked about this. What if someone puts in nickwalter.info? We want it to essentially forward to www.nickwalter.info. Now, I wish that it, uh, Python Anywhere would allow you to just have nickwalter.info or whatever your domain is, but they require that you have that www. So with this being the case, we can make it so that when someone goes to nickwalter.info, it will quickly forward them to www. So uh, I found this little website that shows how to do it for Google domains. Uh, if you have a different provider, like if you use Namecheap or you use GoDaddy, you're going to have to look up how to do that. But basically, uh, you come oh, a little bit here to synthetic record. You change this to permanent redirect and forward path. And we're going to leave, I'll oh, put an at inside of here. And then we're going to make this go to www nickwalter.info and we'll go ahead and add that. Oh, I forgot to do the enable 
uh, SSL on that. Okay, so let's try that. Permanent redirect, forward path. I'm going to do www, no, the at here, then move that to www.nickwalter.info. Okay, enable SSL. Add this. Now, something interesting that I want to show you is that, uh, in fact, I just went and tested it on my phone. My website, it's already been like 30 minutes, but it's actually live, and all this DNS stuff has been figured out. But you'll notice on my computer, if I try and go to, like, nickwalter.info, uh, it's not going to load it for me. Uh, and the reason is, is because on my computer, it's associated like nickwalter.info with not having anything yet. And so anyways, it's something to do with caching and DNS. It's above my head, but I went on my cell phone and look, it's, it's working. It's, it's live on nickwalter.info. And in fact, if you go to, for example, I really like this website. If you search pingdom speed test, pingdom speed test, uh, they essentially help you find things about your website that you can improve. But one of the cool things is if I put in here like nickwalter.info and I say start the test, uh, they will actually show you a little screenshot of what your website looks like, like a little icon. And uh, this will really prove if it's sort of working because this is from a completely separate computer. Um, takes them a little bit of time there. But look at that, you can see there's my website showing up, Nick Walter is commander in chief, and look, even there's that new emoji smile, and they've got all sorts of recommendations about how we could make this page uh, go even faster, but this is a way to prove that it's working. So on your own computer, you're saying, you know, how can I do this? You could go through your computer, and I think the term is flushing your DNS, but I, again, I'm way over my head here, but if you just give it 24, 48 hours, your website will start working on your own computer. And if you need to, check on like a phone or a friend's computer and you should be able to see your website live after a while. Anyways, congratulations. You now know how to share your work with the world. Let's go ahead and make one more website.